a couple of things about this. One, these tasks were initiated through templates. So I do encourage you to define templates when at all possible. Uh, and what that will do is it will, one, streamline the entry process for your change record, but two, it will also provide and add some consistency in terms of the steps and tasks that are uh, expected to be executed during the change process. And, um, and so again, those two things um, have quite a significant impact on the quality of changes and uh, just the, the overall acceptance to the application. The other thing I would point out about change task is the fact that these tasks, once linked to the change, can be managed and, and viewed in what we would refer to as a change manifest. The change manifest is a byproduct of the, the introduction of release management to Remedy Force, which we'll talk about in another webinar. But um, in the change manifest, we can see any and all tasks. We can see um, incidents that might be linked in ultimately what this would allow us to do, not, not that you'd necessarily have incidents linked to, to your changes, but what this would allow us to do is to, one, define an order of execution for those particular uh, tasks. In addition to that, it also allows us to define what the change status is if that record, if we're if that particular task is being is active. So in this case, when we have implement change, a task for implementing the change, that uh, is the second item to be executed, but it will also change the status of the change record to in progress. And so this is certainly, um, you know, this is a, uh, I, I guess, a rudimentary uh, form of a Gantt chart, if you will, because this allows us to identify the task, to identify the, uh, the, the, the status or the change stage that we're in with that particular change. So the change manifest is something when you talk about planning a change that certainly should be utilized. And I think for the most part, from what I've seen, it's probably one of the more underutilized features within Remedy Force. As you can also see, we can export these. So if we needed to put this into a Microsoft project or something to that effect, we'd have the ability of doing so. We can print these. And um, so there's quite a bit of functionality that, that project managers and change coordinators and managers can, can utilize here. All right, going back to this particular change record, um, a couple of other things I want to point out is that when we look at this particular change for updating uh, Microsoft Exchange to 2013, that this particular change record is, um, has a number of configuration items linked to it. So these are items from our CMDB. And because of this linkage, this gives us the ability to now see the change or see the assets that are going to be changed uh, in a graphical display. So by launching the CI Explorer, we can now see a graphical representation of, of our environment. So again, when we start talking about impact analysis, this is um, you know understanding if I if I you know, take this particular server down, what else might be impacted, okay? What's upstream, downstream, those types of things. So as we can see here, this is our change record, and this change record are linked to our mail server, to uh, as well as these components of the cluster, uh, the database that we have for the mail server. These are all things that are associated with this change, but more importantly, we can see the relationship to these other assets within our environment. And if we need to see details, we just simply come over here. We can click um, the, uh, the link to the CI record and see the details of that asset. I should also point out that it, with any of these items that have the red X, that indicates that there are open change records, there are open problem records, uh, incidents, tasks uh, for that particular configuration item. So um, that, again, is, 
is something that uh, is also useful when you start talking about uh, conducting your impact analysis. So the change calendar. Okay, um, so on the surface, those are some things that that are certainly uh, useful and, and should be utilized with your change implementation. What I'd like to do next is just talk a little bit about um, some of the features and how you might configure those. So for templates, for example, here I have, um, I have simply gone to the Remedy Force Administration tab, and with that, under my configure application, I'm able to launch my templates, so I've already got that here, and I actually have a change template um, already uh, open here. So just again, for the sake of time, uh, to speed things along, again, we're trying to keep this to 30 minutes. But as we look at this, this is our standard email change. So we have a description of what this template is. But in addition, uh, on the change record itself, what are the values of the fields that are going to be pre-populated? So the default value here being that Exchange is the only mail server that we have in our environment. We have a category called Exchange, so that has been pre-populated. We have a description that, again, has been pre-populated. Uh, we've defined uh, at least pre-populated an impact and urgency, what the status is, all of those types of things. So that's one element of the change template. But really, what's going to help you in terms of driving consistency are the tasks that are associated with this change record. So here, if we look at our task, we can see that we have a change, um, an application change assessment, and we also have a task for implementing a change. So specifically, those two are separate templates that are linked to our, our task templates that are linked to our change te template. And also, you'll notice here that we can define the order of execution, right? So we want the change uh, assessment to be done before the implementation, and that's been defined here. Now, if there are situations where we have multiple tasks that need to be executed simultaneously, we can do that by giving them the same order number value. Um, for that given step. Now, this is probably not logical. If that was truly the case, we'd probably just ignore the execution order altogether and have all tasks distributed simultaneously. So, again, um, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't stress the uh, value in the change templates or the templates module enough in the sense of driving consistency in terms of how you deliver your changes uh, with, with the application. Okay, uh, some other things to point out um, as we're looking here. <clears throat> if we go back to, actually, let's just real quickly, let's see if there are any questions that, um, that anyone has. So if you, again, have questions, feel free to go ahead and ask those. And it looks like um, it does look like we have uh, a single qu our question right now, so let's go ahead and answer that one. So what's the purpose in the color coding on the change calendar? So let's go back to that change record, and we'll look here at our calendar. Let me get rid of some of these windows that you probably can't see. But if we look at the change schedule, the color coding is based upon the um, – it, it's based upon the change, the the actual. Um, um, it, it's the, to identify the change uh, type, so whether in change category. So notice that this is a significant change, so major, minor, and significant. And um, in addition to that, the change type here. So these are things that are evaluated to determine the color so that you can quickly see. And actually, if we go back over here to the administration, there is um, a slightly different view of that change calendar that uh, includes a uh, – it, it includes a key. 
So let's take a look at that real quickly. And that, and um, and so, <clears throat> all right. So this particular view allows us to, you know, navigate a little bit more quickly. We can go through the different months, how we want to see our change. Uh, we also have the option of um, showing changes by number or by type, um, those types of things. And then again, um, you'll notice the color coding. Uh, so red indicates that it's an emergency change. Um, looks, it's slightly different color for a non-standard change, uh, but both still very much a red tone. And then you have your um, your standard change, which is green. So again, um, those are and then you have a whole, you know, whole key that are related to releases as well.